So before we get started today, I'd encourage you all to subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications because we have something very special coming up very soon. And we have a Facebook page coming out. So if you all go to our YouTube page, up at the top across our banner on the right hand side, you'll see social media links. And if you click on those, it will take you to each of our social media sites. Um, I consider myself fairly tech savvy. However, I'll have to admit, outside of Facebook, um, I'm struggling a bit with the other social medias, um, but I'm catching myself up. So we're gonna have um, Instagram, Twitter, and maybe even TikTok. So we're gonna get started with today's episode, which will be, it takes a village to raise a mama doc. I think that the saying, it takes a village is very true. Um, probably especially for me considering i walked around for probably five minutes this morning looking for my keys that were in my hand and if you guys saw a previous episode where my husband commented that i hadn't found the laundry in 20 years that's probably partially true because if he didn't help me keep my scrubs washed i wouldn't have anything to wear the next day but i think having your your group of friends is very important um, particularly when you have uh, people who are going through similar things as you. I think the the person that most moms put absolutely last is typically themselves. Um, you know, you get so busy uh, with everything in life that you don't do anything for yourself, whether it be um, fitness or doing something special for yourself. Some mornings as a mom and doc, it can get a little crazy around here. There will be days when I'll get a phone call and I have to rush out the door as quickly as possible because in my field of obstetrics, sometimes we have emergencies and I have to get to the hospital really fast. So on those days when I'm getting my clothes on as quickly as possible, my husband is out in the living room packing my bag and throwing some food together so I can have a lunch. My kids are grabbing my name tag and my keys and everybody's kissing me goodbye and telling me they love me as I run out the door. My kids think I'm superwoman, and I don't know how they think that, but um, they always think I'm running off to save somebody's life, which is pretty awesome. And when I come home, they make me feel awesome, even though I feel like I've missed out on time with them. It really does take a lot of people to keep a mom and doc successful and, and, and to help them, because without our families and without the people that we work with, I just don't know how I could do it. Um, there, we spend so much time and energy taking care of other people that it's hard to take care of ourselves. And so without my family and my husband and my kids keeping me going, um, I just don't know how I could do it without them. Just come along with me, okay? We're practicing how to save lives over here at Northwest Board of Physicians for Women. Hi, Dr. Right? Haywood. <laughs> Hey, are you okay? No response. Checking for a pulse. No pulse, no breathing. Okay. Hey, I need help. Starting compression. What do you need? I need an <laughs> ambulance and an AED. Okay, I'll go get it. In a previous episode, you guys met Crystal Hyatt. She is one of our nurses and our practice manager. You'll see the link to that show in the description below. We were only partially joking around about how difficult it is to get me to do things. And as you may see, her job oh. can be fairly difficult to keep me straight. These are a few of our uh, actual texts from this week. And 
And these are some of our amazing sonographers and nurses that I worked with on Thursday, whom truly I couldn't do my job without. We have other amazing people too. They just happen to be at other office locations this day. So this is Brittany. Hi. And Brittany is one of the people in my life that helps take care of me. She understands my schedule and she helps get me in to not only do my hair, but do it in an amazing way. And I love Brittany. So Brittany and I spend a lot of time talking when I'm here about being moms. Um, Brittany has a beautiful little girl and she works very hard and she's a single mom. And, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about what it's like to, to try to be a working mom. So, you know, I, I just wanted to, to ask Brittany, kind of tell me a little bit about, you know, kind of what it's like for you to try to take care of your daughter and be a working mom. Okay, so I know we've talked a lot about the balance of working and taking care of the kids. And I feel like finally it's taken me she will be four, and it's probably taken me until like this year, honestly, to find that balance of not being overwhelmed. Um, but I've made it a priority this year, well, basically a few months ago, to not work as much Saturdays or take off early on, you know, a Wednesday or little things like that just to you know have a healthy balance of not being burnt out and not feeling like a bad mom honestly and how do you find you know the other thing that i really struggle with you know i think most moms the person that they put absolute last is always themselves how do you find time for yourself so I have to work out at least four days a week or I am just in a bad mood, to be honest. Um, so, I've, and I'm not a morning person. I've never been a morning person. So, but I've made it an effort. Like if I'm gonna do this and feel good for myself, like I've got to wake up an hour and a half early. You know, you I always, Think to myself I feel guilty about taking the time to do anything mm -hmm. for myself but I think that in the grand scheme of things we end up being better moms yes. when you stop and you take a little bit of time yeah. for yourself yes yeah and it's even if it's just like you know like once a month getting a facial or something mm -hmm. you have to find you're not going to be the best mom or employee or employer or whatever if you don't do something for yourself sometimes. So apparently I've lived my whole life deprived because I've never eaten one of these little Debbie Christmas cakes. So I learned something new and honestly quite disturbing about Diana this week. She grew up right here in the panhandle of Florida and has never had a little Debbie. So we are going to have her try multiple different kinds of Little Debbies. And I would love to ask all of you to please comment below which Little Debbie you would like to see Diana try. Also, I would love it if anyone else has never had a Little Debbie to also put that in the comments. Cakes. So here you go, Sarah Pacheco. I'm gonna eat it and tell you what I think. <laughs> Official opinion is it's tasty. I might finish the whole thing. Thank you for the opportunity. Ugh, I don't think I like little Debbies. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. I unfriend you. That's not how it works.
That's not how any of this works.